sales and I decided to start making cold calls yeah and they would just say pick up the phone smile and dial all right cool do you think I just called one client yeah I think I just was like yeah I made my dude I had to make it 500 calls in a day boom 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 sales I say this all the time is a lot like dating you got to go out you got to hit options like it is a lot of large numbers, numbers law of averages yeah. thank you every exactly. and then, you're closer to a yes <laughs> exactly every no is closer to yes amazing so and what you find in sales and also in dating the more sales calls you make, the more you deal with the rejection. It's not even a big deal. Exactly. It's my hundredth yeah. call that hung out with me. And, and the girl that's like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, I'm good. I'll just go talk to this girl. I'm good. And then you'll, it rolls you'll, off your back. Your vibe gets better. And then your, 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 your riz gets better as a result of... So you can go to the club. Actually, Myron uh, talked about this. He used to talk yeah. about this back in the day. He would say... He would go to the club in Miami before he was famous or whatever. And he would talk to sometimes 40 or 50 girls in the night. Yeah. Like, not, not because he was... Obviously, he was getting probably... He would could have got phone numbers and stuff. He was looking for like sort of sort of you know kind of fun pretty quickly, or he was looking for for girls who show him immediate interest. If they didn't show him immediate interest, he'd be like, okay, on to the next one. Forty or fifty girls in the night. Do you know what I mean? You have yeah. to be doing that volume. Yeah, you know? that's a lot of work. Yeah, but keep in mind, that, and I say this, that's, 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 that's a life of a guy, ladies and gentlemen. And by the way, we're gonna weigh in on this. We're gonna have your ladies weigh in in a second. But I'll say this: keep in mind, Byron's a six foot three, in shape, good looking, black guy, light skin. Yeah. Like doing his thing, has game, is smart, is intelligent, right. literally knows the rules of the game. Yeah. And he is still like, all right, what do I got to talk to with the numbers? So imagine the guy in the example you gave that's just average height, average income, no game, no riz. Like what's going through his head? Mm -hmm. So I think buddy, 6'9", multimillionaire, NBA player, one of my yeah. best friends. And this <laughs> Where's is he at? Yeah, well, <laughs> uh, this is 10 years ago. And he's like, listen, guys, here's how it's done. Okay, all you got to do <coughs> is walk in the bar, stand on the wall, make eye contact with a girl, and just give her one of these, and that's all you gotta do. I'm like, yeah, when you're fucking six nine, everyone knows who you are. You're yeah. on the cover of tabloids. Yeah, it's a little easier that. It's like I want to hear what the five foot seven bald broke dude is doing to get laid. Like I want to hear his story because that guy's got to work. And like I brought that. this up to Justin Waller, and I said, listen, Waller. Some people will say you're a good looking guy, six three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're hanging with the Tades. You're like mm. you're a known guy. All right. So there's a lot to unpack there. There's really three really important lessons from that value tainment money. Uh, channel uh, they're talking about a lot of dating topics I would love to go on the value attainment uh, podcast I would love to do that actually that would be really awesome uh, if you guys are out there please hit me up I would love to fly over there and do it but anyway um, they're talking about a lot of dating topics these days and uh, uh, cold approach being more of a numbers game is one of the things that they've been bringing up recently it does make sense <coughs> he also talks about how we had to cold call a lot of people um, in order to get some sort of success. Uh, one factor that they didn't bring bring into the equation is that when they mentioned uh, online dating, the uh, the online dating numbers, uh, Tinder, Bumble, etc., they uh, they have a, a lower flake rate than day game and cold approach because well the girls are in the apps and they know what they're in for. Also the girls are more likely to be down for a fling one night stand etc so when they give you their number through say tinder bumble or whatever is going to replace this app soon hopefully they do replace this app these apps soon because um my understanding is that they're getting more and more expensive and they've got a bit of a monopoly on the market uh, and the service that they're providing is pretty low quality <clears throat> And so, and also, a large percentage of the girls on these apps aren't very high quality. You got, you're, you're, you're more likely to get higher quality girls out here approaching them, obviously, because not all girls are out there. But if you cold approach a girl out here, she might have a multitude of things going on in her life, and she doesn't expect uh, you to come over and talk to her and speak to her. So it's not really when she's getting on an app she knows what she's in for right so she's more likely to respond and know that when she gives you her number it's time to go on a date with you and more likely to sleep with you she's also prepared for a one night stand etc but when it is a cold approach like out here so many other factors can play into this you it might be cloudy she might not be in the, the best mood you might approach her on a sunday night or a monday morning where she's depressed because she's on her way to work and it's the beginning of the week rather than approaching her on a friday or saturday lunchtime where she's in a better mood uh, 
her cat could have died yesterday. She might be in a situation ship and not tell you that she's in a relationship because she's not really in a relationship. She's just sleeping with one guy that probably has a rotation of girls and um, she would rather just be one of those rotate, rotating girls and um, she's not quite ready to try for a, a real relationship um, or to sleep around because she's getting everything she wants from him and she's got other things going on in her life etc. So the flake rate out here is a little bit higher so this is why when guys talk about it being a bit of a numbers game they do have a little bit of a case but there are a lot of strategies to increase the rate and when almost no men are approaching at all you've got a monopoly out here pretty much because almost no guys are approaching at all themselves anyway so <clears throat> that's one two is really uh, exposure to rejection and the host did mention that as well that after making 500 uh, cold calls after a while he just got used to it and just kept cold calling knowing that every rejection was closer to a win <clears throat> some guys will come to me and um, I think my biggest victory this this year was a guy who literally day one he's like oh, I think I'm about to quit I'll give it three more months I'm gonna quit and then he gets himself a, a beautiful girl way above his mate value and um, uh, a success during an immersion uh, which does happen quite often when I have guys that are you know even just average attractiveness because a lot of my cold approach skills and coaching now is getting quite advanced so uh, you can even up the stats in your favor it's not just a numbers game but also I think that you need to take in uh, take into account that um, in the early stages you're going to get some rejection and you need to get the exposure to that so that you can uh, get used to it the other aspect of it is you don't want to be getting the rejection and then start becoming bitter and having that negatively affect your dating life and your cold approach life uh, because you're uh, you're having all of these uh, issues um, carrying the baggage and getting angry etc so you don't want to be doing any of that um, and that's another thing that I teach out here as well three is that looks do matter so they did mention that uh, even Myron uh, is six foot three He's slim, he's now famous, and he's rich, and he's black, so he's probably got a massive cock. <laughs> he ticks all of the boxes, and this guy will still go out and approach 50 girls in a nightclub. So what does a, a short dude that is ugly and old and poor got to do? Well, he's got to have some advanced game. So when you think about it that way, there's also uh, the fact that, you know, mate value plays a, a big part here, and this is why when... When I see a lot of guys going to tall, handsome, good-looking coaches, they've never had to battle it. And this is why the host of Valuetainment made a lot of sense. Because it made a lot of sense to me, and a lot of guys out there aren't necessarily getting that. Because I'm not getting a lot of guys that are relatively good-looking in their 20s. Most of my clients that are coming to me are white dudes in their 40s. Or older. So a lot of my success is probably one of the hardest demographics or, or uh, guys guys that are Indian but also older Indian guys as well um, but a lot of the good-looking guys they're going to good-looking young coaches and when you really think about it it's like well what type of skill and what type of knowledge base would these young coaches be building up they don't know what they're talking about uh, because I've never had to come up against the adversity of being of lower mate value and that's not a bad thing I think a lot of guys see that as a bad thing I can only get coaching from a good-looking guy imagine the success rate a guy like myself can get you compared to a pretty boy that's never had to develop himself think about that that's the difference the difference is I can get you far better results because I've had to battle my entire life I've had to come up with uh, extremely advanced methods uh, to make day game work, cold approach work, anything work. Hell, I would use online dating if it actually worked for a guy my age and my height. It just doesn't. The only, the, uh, I would go into the nightclubs and uh, be uh, risen up girls at 2 a.m. in the morning after a few drinks if that worked, but it doesn't at my age. Which means that any guy of lower mate value, I can help. Uh, and I can get them better results than any of the pretty boys out there. And that's just that's just facts. 
That's, a, that's not me just spruiking my coaching. It's a fact. And this is why uh, when people talk about these things, they're like, oh, where's your infields? They're like, oh, show me the tens that you've got. That's not what we're doing here, guys. You guys know um, pound for pound in the UFC? It's like getting Alexander Volkanovsky, the pound for pound, for pound champ, uh, the world's best fighter, who's shorter than me, fighting John Jones, the heavyweight champ. It just doesn't work that way. You have a 40-year-old guy that's shorter um, going up against a uh, really good-looking tall guy. Uh, it's not exactly a fair fight, is it? It's not exactly a fair comparison, but when you guys look at infields, that's all you look at, which is wrong. The other aspect of the UFC, which is an art form as well, martial arts, pick up art, they're exactly the same sort of thing. You have the standard way of doing it, then you have the advanced way that the elite guys do. The elite guys come up with their own advanced sort of methods. Now, the thing here is, I like the ultimate fighter. I'd love to have uh, the ultimate PUA or something along those lines. And I like the beginning of it where you'd have two coaches and a whole group of guys and one coach would pick one guy and go on his team as like, like uh, in school and then the other coach would get to pick one guy and, you, and then you build your team. Then those guys get coached by the coach and we find out who gets the best results at the end of you know the series or whatever. I would love to do that and it's not exactly the same as the keys to the VIP because it is a little bit more subjective with the keys of the VIP because what we have is a bunch of coaches using their subjective opinions uh, based on uh, who has success, which does get us closer to the truth because there were some times where there, were, there was a stripper, a good looking guy with a six pack and jacked, good looking dude, who had better success in one of the challenges in the keys to the VIP, but they gave the win to the the, the lower mate value, not as good looking guy, uh, because he performed better even though he got lesser results. That's where the judges came in. That's where the judges showed what their their uh, you know they earned their money that that day. With the ultimate ultimate PUA or ultimate dating coach, which might be an even better one. I would love to be able to put my methods by picking a bunch of random guys against any coach in the, in the, in the industry and just seeing who has better game. This, and this is what men do. And this is why we have all these issues in the industry because guys are like, oh, well, I've got my subjective opinion and here's a video attacking some other guy. The thing is, with sports, and the reason why men love sports so much is that there's a referee there's clear-cut rules, there's sideline uh, judges, there's an, there's an audience, you know, judging and commenting. Uh, there's a video referee, just in case the referee doesn't see, see things. And there's probably a video referee, yeah, there's a video referee sitting up somewhere that gets to review the footage if there's a problem. And they get closer and closer to the truth of which is the better team. Why not do that with dating coaches if there's such a, a, a disparity here and people can't choose who is the best? Um, if Value Tamed were to put that down, I would love to be one of the coaches on there. Um, I would love to have uh, my my knowledge coaching guys up against one of these pretty boys out there and see who, who can coach guys better. Um, that would be awesome, regardless of whether I win or not because that would get us closer to the truth. But anyway, uh, that was an interesting uh, podcast by Value Tamer. I wanted to talk about it, and I also wanted to say I'd love to go on their channel. But anyway, check out the website, top link in the description. If you want to learn a little bit about, about myself, and you read books like uh, David Goggins, um, maybe read my book, The Disabled Casanova, and see where I came from. Um, it's kind of in a similar vein to uh, the David Goggins things, except I'm not American, don't have the advantages of David Goggins. I've had to battle a lot harder through more adversity. So you can check that out, top link in the description, check out the website. And if you're interested in learning some cold approach in Sydney, Australia, this is Sydney. Also, I'm not a dating coach sitting in a third world country 
who's half my age taller than me better looking with more money I'm a dating coach in Sydney Australia coaching in one of the most difficult cities in the world and if you're in Sydney hit me up we can work some magic see you guys in the next video